So last month, I brought my giant 3D printed Gundam to 3D Printopia. It's a 3D printing convention in Bel Air, Maryland. I drove this down there, it rode in the back of my car. It was a fun trip, it was a great time. There's just one problem. Other than the fact the eyes light up in this thing, this giant robot, it doesn't really robot. It doesn't really do anything. It just kind of stands around and looks pretty. It does look pretty pretty. Anyways, at 3D Printopia, the past couple years that I've gone out, there was a group of folks there from a local Star Wars Astromech and Robot Builders Association there. And they have their R2s, their beep boops, and their other, I don't know. Let me know all the names of the, all the Star Wars robots in the comments below. That should drive enough YouTube engagement to keep my channel busy for the next year. And uh, they're always a great group of folks to talk to. And I think after chatting with them over the years, meeting a bunch of them and picking their brains, I think I finally decided that the next big project on this channel is going to be something I've been putting off for a while. We're going to build ourselves a Star Wars astromech droid. So let's get started. And that's it. That's all I got done so far. Um, okay, this project is actually going to take a long time. There is a lot to print uh, for this build. There's a lot of stuff I'm gonna have to learn when it comes to remote controlled, Arduinos. Um, there, there's, this is gonna be a rabbit hole I'm gonna go down and it's gonna take a long time. So in the meantime, let's take a little bit of a step back and start with something a little smaller. Sound good? This is Tito. The files that I'm using for the Astromech Droid, if you've done any research into building an Astromech Droid of your own, are from Michael Baddeley. And I subscribe to his Patreon, and I'll be honest, it's probably one of the most bang for your buck Patreons out there for like $5. You get access to a ton of files. Majority of them are Star Wars themed, but there are other non-Star Wars themed files there. And in those files, I found the plans, the instructions, the bill of materials, and the files to print the parts for this little guy. This is called Tito. It is a super cute little robot. Um, it just kind of drives around. My little guy's had a lot of fun, unfortunately, antagonizing my poor dog with this thing upstairs. This is definitely a fun little electronics project. It doesn't really need a big bill of material. It's not that expensive of a project to do, and it's relatively simple to build. So let's clear off the bench, hop in the time machine, go back in time, and build ourselves a Tito. This is gonna be fun, right? Yeah. But before we get into the build, we do need to take a quick moment to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. Starting a new project is always fun, but what do you do when you just don't have the ability to do what you want to do? PCBWay can help you out. Have an electronics product in need of a custom PCB board? Well, there's PCBWay for that. Need something 3D printed, but you don't have a 3D printer? Or your 3D printer can't print what you need it to print? Well, guess who can also help with that as well? PCBWay, and heck, you need something CNC'd? Well, guess what? They can help you with that too. So check them out in the link in the video description below. Sign up and save with PCB Way. Cheers. So let's go and build our little Tito Astromech Droid. And this build should be pretty simple. So I'll start off by going over everything we're gonna need. And first things first, as you can probably guess, we're gonna need some 3D printed parts. So I have all the parts printed here and I printed everything using Polymaker filament. And the first thing I wanna shout out here is this Polymaker ASA CF08 filament. I love this stuff. I'm gonna be using this on a, a future project, a future printer build. It's a low carbon fiber ASA filament. So it's really nice because ASA and ABS, traditionally you have some issues with layer adhesion. So going with a high carbon fiber percentage fill means you're gonna have even worse layer adhesion. Carbon fiber doesn't stick to carbon fiber, but with this low percentage, you're still gonna have pretty good layer adhesion and you get that nice carbon fiber finish. So it's, it really hides those layer lines. So we really like that there. And then I do have the tank treads are printed in Polymaker TPU, um, 95A TPU. These I printed with two walls, 0% infill, and I did scale them a little bit. I went with 101.5% scaling. I didn't want them too tight on the tank treads because I didn't want too much force on the servos. Uh, so these I did scale a little bit. And then instead of painting the droid, which you can paint, you can get really customized with these kind of builds. It's your build, make it your own. But instead of painting, I gone ahead and I did a little bit of cheating. I went with two different filaments for this build because the, again, ASA CFO8 filament hides layer lines really good. So I did some tricks where I used two different filaments and I changed filament at a layer height to get this bicolor 
side piece there. And then also for the front face here, um, I did cheat and use my Prusa XL in multi-material mode to print that. I also did print some bits and bobs in Black Pet G. So that is the 3D printed hardware. You can print this stuff with PLA, Pet G. You don't need any fancy printer to print the parts for these. Uh, standard settings, three walls, 15% infill. You don't need to go crazy with it. After that, we're gonna need some hardware. Now the hardware for this build is relatively lightweight. And if you've been involved with 3D printing for a bit, you probably have some of this on hand. You're gonna need a bunch of M3 screws, specifically countersunk M3 screws. We're gonna need some bearings as well. Um, the whole bill of material is listed on the Patreon page. So you're gonna need some 683 bearings along with a uh, 625 bearing. You're also gonna need some square nuts and hex nuts as well. And then for electronics, it's quite simple as well. You're gonna need some servos. So we have two FS90R servos. These are continuous servos. So that means they can just keep spinning. These are our two drive servos. And then we have two uh, MG90S servos. Those are for moving the head around. You're also gonna need all the little bits and bobs that come with the servos. For power, we have this battery pack here I got on Amazon. It's a 4.8 volt, 2400 milliamp hour battery pack. It does come with a USB charger as well. So it's a nice all-in-one kit. And then uh, this is gonna be remote controlled. So we're gonna need some sort of remote control system. I'm using just a FlySky receiver with its transmitter. I've had this, it came with a Death Racer kit uh, that I built a while ago. You can use pretty much any radio control as long as you have the ability to control four servos via PWM. And then that's pretty much it. We're gonna need some glue to hold it together. You can use two part epoxy like it recommends in the guide. We're also gonna need a screwdriver and some Allen keys. So really not a lot of hardware. The bomb cost of this build is relatively low. And uh, if, you're, if you've been involved in RC stuff or 3D printing, you may already have a bunch of this stuff on hand already. So let's get to building now. Having one of these little 3D printed trays to hold all your components while you build is really nice to have, by the way. And as always, whenever you're screwing into plastic, always be careful, you don't wanna over tighten it and rip your threads out. Because if you rip the threads out, you're gonna be reprinting the part and that's never fun. Now, the only thing I changed from the instructions were in the front here, I just used nylocks to keep the idler screws from coming loose. And then that should just press right into there, hopefully. And that is our leg of dry train assembly completed. So now we can put this aside. We're gonna move on to the head assembly now.
you need to position this servo before you put this plate on because the wires go underneath there. And once you tighten that, it won't go anymore. Right. Electric screwdriver would have come in really handy right about now. Number three. Okay. Now we may need to switch around our two drive servos um, depending on how our motion works, if we're going forward or backwards. Well, that's an easy swap, so we'll just plug in whatever ones we got first. Check, make sure it works, and then we'll go about making it pretty after. And hopefully, nothing catches fire. Turn on our receiver. Okay, so we gotta enable tank controls. Now, one thing you're gonna have to do is, since this does use tank controls, you are gonna have to set up a mix uh, on your controller yourself. The manual comes with instructions on how to do it, which uh, work good for my Fly Sky controller here, but if you're using, obviously, a different controller, you're probably gonna have to consult the manual on that and how to set up the mix for that. Our little droid is up and running and functional. We have head movement, you can look up, look down, look left, look right. We do have our tank controls here. You can dance around, do some movement. I just have it on this uh, piece of textured ABS just because my desk was a little on the smooth side. But that was a fun little build. The entire build probably took me about an hour to put everything together. And a couple times I had to take stuff apart and put it back together. Ooh, don't drive off the desk there. Uh, was that a fun build, Tito? Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay, that actually went together pretty good. The entire build took about an hour uh, to put together. Bomb cost is really gonna depend a lot on if you already have hardware like a controller or servos or screws already on hand. Uh, I think for this entire build, um, I'm in maybe 50 bucks, if that. And uh, again, huge shout out to Polymaker. They did provide the filament that I used uh, for this build. If you do wanna get this ASA CFO weight yourself, I'll have a link for it in the video description below. It's a really nice filament. As for all the other gubbins like servos and whatnot, I won't have links for that because I'm in Canada and depending on where you live in the world, you're gonna probably find better options locally. And uh, again, huge shout out to Michael Baddeley for the files for this. Again, um, I'm planning on building a full-size R6 Astromech droid. That is going to take a while, and little projects like this, I think, are gonna be fun little stopgap learning experiences uh, to keep me busy, to help me learn more about RC stuff and whatnot, and just get better acquainted with this kind of build. Um, 
as I get closer to finishing that R6. It's gonna be a while. It's gonna be a while. You see it? You lost your hat. That's okay, we'll print you another. So there you have it. We have now built ourselves a Tito. Um, since that build, I did do a few minor changes. I added a little antenna to it uh, using some just cut off filament I had left over. And I probably am going to change these tracks out. Uh, these are the Polymaker TPU 95A tracks and they're in a light blue. I did find some Fiberology uh, 40D darker blue. It's a little bit of a softer uh, plastic and I think softer will work better with these treads. Uh, these servos are not the most powerful in the world, so any little bit of help that you can do to make them run a little bit better will probably benefit it. And I think the, uh, the darker blue will probably match the paint scheme a little bit better there. Um, but yeah, this was a super fun build. It took me about an hour to put it all together. Uh, setting up the electronics was very simple as well. It's all on the controller side. There's no programming you have to learn, nothing like that. And it is a fun little droid. My little guy has had a ton of fun driving this around the upstairs of my house, uh, unfortunately antagonizing my poor dog as well. And uh, it does drive a little bit better on a rougher surface, this, this desk. It's a little smooth, so we got a, we got a little bit of uh, tread slip in there. We're, we're drifting, we're drifting our droid. This is a good starting platform, I think. The, the tank tread assembly itself, you can build one of those and drive it around on its own. And if you're looking for a base for a little project, involving tank treads. You can use that as a base for a project. Also, the head itself is, you know, like most politicians, it's empty up here. So if you really want to, I'm sure you can put a camera in here, get hook it up to a Raspberry Pi, maybe do some uh, object tracking, motion tracking, have it follow you around maybe, have the head follow faces. This would be a fun little project to expand upon and to customize it and to make it more of your own thing. And that's always the cool thing I love about projects is, is taking something that somebody else may have designed or worked on, but taking it and making it your own, customizing it, tweaking it, adjusting it, personalizing it to what you want to do. Because at the end of the day, it's your project. It's your build. Make it the way you want to make it. So I'm Taylor Canuck Creator. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Again, huge shout out to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Uh, check them out at the link in the video description. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on cool stuff like this in the future. Leave a comment, smash the like button, and I will see you in the future. Take care. Cheers.